31, welcome to example five. So let's take a look at it. It says, without graphing the function, determine the maximum number of x-intercepts and turning points for this, oh, fun looking beast. All right, so the first thing I wanna do with this polynomial, again, polynomial, there's one, two, three, four, there's five terms in here. I'm gonna put them in descending powers of x. So I see x to the 12th as the degree, and then I see a nine, a four, three, and a constant. So let me rewrite this with descending powers of x. So 14x to the 12th um, minus 13x to the 9th minus 8x to the 4th plus 2x cubed plus 108. And let me just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just wanna make sure I got all five terms. So here is my leading term. And that's the term that's gonna drive all of my analysis, all right? So if I look at this, this leading term has a degree 12. So this is a degree 12 polynomial. And I don't even wanna try and graph this on my graphing calculator. That would be a lot to take in. But the, the question here says, determine the maximum number of x-intercepts and turning points. And that's going to go back to that box on the previous page, and specifically the last sentence in it. It says a polynomial of degree n will have at most n x-intercepts and n minus 1 turning points. So the highest number of x-intercepts is going to be n of them, whatever that degree is. And then it, the largest number of turning points would be n minus one turning points. Well, we saw in example five, we have a degree 12 polynomial. So for example five, our n is 12. So I will have at most 12 x-intercepts and 11 turning points. And that's, that's the answer to that question. So this polynomial will have at most 12 x-intercepts. And just take a moment and think about that. I mean, that means it could cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis 12 times. That is a lot of zeros to have to find and to write out. So we'll have at most 12 x-intercepts and at most 11 turning points. And that would also be a lot to find, right? When I say turning points, right, that's saying collectively maxes and mins. So I might have 11 of those. That's just, that's a lot of ordered pairs to have to go after, which is why I actually don't want to graph this and find all of those, those options. And when I say at most, you might be wondering, well, is it 12? Is it 11, 10, 9? Because it says at most here. There are theorems out there to help you determine the exact number of x-intercepts and the exact number of turning points. But the sentence we were referring to before, it's just kind of a quick and dirty way to get an, an idea. So this is just, I know there's at most 12 x-intercepts 12 and 11 turning points. If you ever want to find out specifically how many there are, there's other theorems out there, and I'm happy to show them to you if you want. Just give me a shout and we can hang. All right, so with that, we're going to head on into example six, which is the last example of the section. All right, I'll see you in a few again. Bye.